Now in this lesson, I want to talk about how you can use pretty much abstract shapes to enhance your designs, to lead the eye, and just make them a little bit more interesting. And we're going to start with a photograph that you see I have here. And we're going to go and grab our pen tool. And I'm going to zoom out of this document a lot, because what we're going to do is not really create a frame. Well, it's sort of, it's going to frame the picture and focus it a little bit more on the face, but we're not necessarily cropping it. We're just going to create a design element to kind of fill in all this space around here and just kind of narrow in on the face. So I'm going to start on the outside. And I'm just going to click to start a path. I'm going to drag, or click and drag to get a path started around here. And we're going to curve it around and then pretty much come right outside the document here. So we got a nice curved path going there. I'm going to option click right on this path here and just close it out by going all the way on the outside here and just finishing up the shape. Now I may need to tweak it a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and select this path and let's modify a couple of things here. Again, the beauty of using paths is that you have the ability to go ahead and modify them this way. Well, let's have, I have that one curving down a little bit. And we'll just bring this angle up a little bit more there. Now, so it's over here in our paths. I'm going to load it as a selection. I'm going to either, you can either press Command Enter to load it as a selection or just press the little selection icon here in the paths. Let's go back into the layers and I'm going to go ahead and create a new blank layer on there. And in that selected area, I'm going to load it or fill it with the color of her eye, which surprisingly enough is blue. Hey, my favorite color. So I'm going to grab the eyedropper tool, making sure you have at least a 5x5 five five average on there. And we're going to go ahead and click right in there and sample that blue color. As you can see, it shows up right inside my foreground swatch. I'm going to press Option Delete, and we'll fill that layer in with that shape. Keep it selected. I'm, I just reactivated the selection there. Keep it selected, and here's what we're going to do. Grab your selection tool. Grab any selection tool. It doesn't matter. And we're going to go in here, and we're going to grab that selection and just move it ever so slightly to the upper right area just to kind of give it a little bit of a band right across here. And I want to remove the rest of this area of selection. So we've offset the selection. So we're going to remove the area that's selected on the blue shape right now. And, and if you do this, you're going to hold down the Option key and the Command key. So if you go right here to the layer, and I'm going to hover over that layer, I'm going to hold down the Command key, and it's going to load it as a selection. By holding down the Option key along with it, it will actually subtract from the selection. So when I click on that layer, it leaves us just that area that's been selected. Now we've got an area outside the document we don't need, so I'm just going to hold down the Option key and draw a rectangular over that, and it will deselect it. So now we've got the selected area here. I'm going to go ahead and create a new blank layer, and we're going to apply a gradient to that. So I'm going to select the gradient tool, go into, into the gradient editor, or the gradient picker here, and I'm going to choose this gradient here, not because of the color, but because of the variations of gradients there. I could go in and create my own, but why not do this and save some time? So what I'm going to do is go into the image. I'm going to drag it down from top to bottom and apply the gradient, as you can see right there. And I'm going to remove the color information. I'm going to press Shift-Command-U, and that will desaturate it, leaving it gray. Now, I could leave it like that, and it would be fine. Or I can press Command or Control-U and bring up the color eyes, and we can give it a color. You would give it a blue to match the rest of the blue of the image there. And it starts to give that shape a little dimension. You know, it, here it looked really flat and boring. You know, now it's starting to show a little bit, a little bit of dimension and make it a little bit more interesting. Well, let's keep going. Now let's add a texture to this shape layer. You know, let's not leave it a flat color. And over here, I have open a texture file. It's just a pattern, as you can see right there. But it's red. It doesn't look right. No problem. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that and just drag it right into the name of the document we're working in, and just release it. Now it's probably a higher res file. I'm going to press Command and Control T and you can see that it's really big compared to my working file. So let's scale that down. I'm holding down the Shift and the Option key to scale it down proportionately to the center there. Now let's just scale it down until it fits inside the window there. I'm not worrying about the excess area here. So I'm going to press Enter and let's zoom back in. And like we did before, we're going to remove the or desaturate this layer by pressing Shift Command U. And then I'm going to invert the values of this layer. Let's press Command and Control I to invert it. Now let's reposition this right above that blue shape layer. And we're going to clip it inside of that layer. I'm going to hold down the Option key, and we're going to clip that right inside that layer there. And then let's blend it, make it look a little better by changing the blend mode to overlay. So now we're getting a really cool looking pattern there. Very cool.
All right, let's uh, do, a, do a few more things here. I'm going to go up here into the, or actually select that shape layer, and I'm going to create a new layer above it, and it will automatically be clipped inside of that existing layer. And I want to get a, not just a texture variation here, but I want to get a color variation. So on that blank layer, I'm going to use that same blue with the gradient tool, and we're going to use the foreground, the transparent gradient. And I'm just going to draw from the top corner here down to the middle area right about there. Now, we didn't see any change, of course, because this blue is the same as the background. Let's change the blend mode now to multiply, and now it gets a little darker up in there, and it looks pretty interesting. Now, all we need to do now is just add uh, some elements down here. Well, I'm going to add a shape. Let's go over here and grab our custom shape tool. And you've got a number of different shape libraries here. Let's just add something silly. Let's do this little paw print here. And let's apply it as a shape layer. So make sure you have that uh, first object selected. I'm going to select the topmost layer because it's going to create a new layer whenever I do this. And I didn't want to be clipped inside there. And let's set the shape color to white. And I'm going to hold down my shift key and just draw out this shape. And we'll just kind of position it right about there. And it looks pretty good, but let's just add a little bit of a drop shadow just to make it a little bit more interesting. Just like that. That looks pretty good. And you can almost do anything at this point. You can add some text. Let's say, well, let's say it was going to be a graduation thing. We'll do 2009. Why not? And we'll just size that text down. Press the command and control T and we'll scale that down. And position it right there. We're going to need to change that type style. That's not working for this theme here. Let's get something a little bit more elegant. Perhaps copper plate? Nah. We're going to need to adjust that tracking there. Let's do that. Okay. Let's try again with the text. Let's do this one. That's not bad. Again, I can always change it. And let's position that right there. That could be a school symbol or anything like that. But there you have it, being able to take a photograph. Now, oh, you know what? I wanted to do one last thing here. We can make it look a little bit more interesting if we desaturated the image itself and perhaps brought back in just the blue of the eyes. It'll carry over the theme, so let's do that. I'm going to go and select that image layer. Now, I don't necessarily want to desaturate the photo itself. I may want to go back to a color version of it. So let's do this. Let's go into the, uh, the adjustment layer menu and go up here and choose, uh, where did they hide it? Gradient map, right here at the bottom. And it's obviously uh, referencing the foreground and background colors, which are both white right now. So let's go ahead and hit the default here. Or rather, let's go in here and we'll set this to the first one, black and white. And we're going to need to reverse it. So there it looks like it's black and white. So it's applied it as an adjustment layer. You can see inside the layers panel here. So all we need to do to bring back the blue in those eyes is right on the layer mask, let's grab a brush, or a very small brush, painting with white. And let's zoom in here. And let's just bring those eyes back in. Let's paint with black, rather. And we're just going to mask that effect away, that adjustment out. Bring back the blue in those eyes. And that carries a theme throughout the entire image. But the main, the main point here is that you've got the shapes that make the image a little bit more interesting by adding a texture and giving it a little bit of dimension, but using shapes is a one way of enhancing or focusing attention and making your images a little bit more appealing.